Hello everybody, uh, this is Lance, and thanks for watching my video today. Um, today I'm going to be voicing over this painting because I forgot to turn the volume on, and I was trying to do some brush strokes and stuff, so uh, in order to give it some sort of uh, um, volume or audio, I'm just going to have to talk you through it. So hopefully everybody's having a good day today, and uh, hopefully the audio sounds good. I'm trying to figure it out so they sound better. What I have here is an 8x10 canvas, and I'm just adding some, uh, what it is, is some, uh, I think it's Prussian blue and some phthalo blue mixed together, and I've mixed paint thinner in it, and all that does is, since this is a palette knife painting, is all that does is, it's kind of like a wash on there that I'll work over, and uh, it dries pretty fast, but again, I kind of went through here and added some, uh, um, some, uh, some of this, and I'm trying to make the, the, the border, the top darker than the middle, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes you can see that these are working good, but they're also, um, they're also, um, getting, um, the blending and stuff, so I got a paper towel here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to, uh, just wipe excess off, the excess off and, and go from there. Okay. So I'm just going back and forth a little bit there. And kind of cleaning it off. Trying to get as much off as I can so I don't want the next um, bit of stuff um, too wet a canvas. But like I said, the, the paint thinner really kind of turns it into a wash and then it dries out super fast. So anyway... As we go through here, I'm just adding right there a little bit of dark to the, uh, to the, uh, top and the bottom to kind of, you know, you want your, the middle, the horizon to be lighter, and that'll give you depth in any painting. Helps with that, so, um, but yeah, just kind of going through and, and, uh, adding this to it. It's looking good. And, yeah, I'll just keep going. And here we've just kind of, I must be getting some paint together on my palette. I've got some white. I'm just using a palette knife here. A little white here. And I'm just going to try to make some clouds. So, and they're not too hard to do with a palette knife. You just need to be able to come in and kind of take that knife and get it on the edge of the knife. And then just scrumble it around in circles until you get to where you like it. You can see that is... Uh, you know, I'm trying to just make cloud shapes. I mean, clouds can be any shape you want. So I like the, uh, using a palette knife on them. You can scrub them right into the canvas and they will pick up some of that undercolor, that blue, because it's still wet and you'll see some change in color. I'm going to add some, some, uh, darker color for the shadows in here too. So just trying to make another one above it. Simple clouds. I did another video on this too that's, um, that's, um, you can actually hear the sounds of the palette and stuff. It sounds pretty cool. Uh, that's what I was going for with this, but since I, uh, forgot to turn the power on, I guess, uh, now you're stuck with my voice for the next 33 minutes. Um, but I kind of want to explain it as I go too, so, and yeah, maybe I'll crop this into a short video at some point in time and that would be really kind of cool. I have a bit of a squeaky chair, so I'll try not to have that in the way. Okay, here I'm just trying to make some shadow colors. I've got some crimson, and I'm mixing it with blue. I think that's a magnesium blue right there next to the white. It's a good color, too. I don't think I use too much of it, though. If you mix blue and crimson, it might be red, too. If you mix blue and crimson, you're going to get a nice lavender color, which a lot of times is uh, pretty good for clouds and shadow clouds, stuff like that. Okay, I'm still mixing. I think I got it about right. I went a little darker, so I'm adding a little more Prussian to it there, mixing it up on this, just a clear palette here. 
I use that because it sounds, but it's got a pretty good noises when you're mixing the, the, uh, uh, when you're mixing the, uh, colors together on the palette. It kind of sounds good. Clicking noises, tapping, I don't know. Stuff that sounds relaxing, I suppose. Or it could be annoying, too. So here I'm just trying to layer in and see there I made a mistake. I kind of had too much. And so this shows you how you can fix stuff. All I did was scrape up to take a little bit of that off. And I'm just going to kind of go through there and and I'll just come back in and I'll see how easy it is to fix. You know, on the bottom of the clouds, you kind of want to make them flat. And you can always come in on here and you can t you can go over it. There it is. Very good. Okay. And then here I'm just going to put another, probably another cloud on top of that one so it's, uh, so it works fine. There we go. This new mic I got is really nice. I, I like it. It sounds good. And... I'm learning a lot about audio <laughs> and video. See, now I'm just adding some highlights in the clouds. and You can mess around with these forever, but I didn't want this painting to be very long, and I think it's about 34 minutes, a little over that. So that's pretty good. But yeah, it's just nice and just kind of trying to mix the colors together, and then you don't need to overwork your clouds. They don't have to be perfect. I mean, nothing's perfect anyway, so... But when you're using a palette knife, you can really get some cool, some cool stuff to go on there. So now I'm gonna figure it out. What am I gonna do with that blotch that I got on there? So I'm just gonna use that as a shadow, and then put some clouds over the top of it. There. See that? And that's a smaller one, so he'll be closer to you. He's in front of the other one. And they're kind of triangular shaped clouds. You can and then just put some round pieces on. You know, go in circles. Try to make them round and. You know, fan brushes work, one inch brushes work, two, you can do whatever you want there. I kind of touched the bottom of the canvas there, so um, what I was doing there is just, you know, cleaning that up where my, because your palette knife's super flat to the canvas here. And I'm pushing pretty hard. And then see some shadows under there. I just, I did a similar one to this. It's posted. I think it's out there yet. See that? Boom. Just leave it right there. And I might add to it, but there, that's a good looking little cloud. You can see the lights coming from probably the right on this. In some spots, it's it's hitting, but um, I think next I'm going to move into the, uh, next we'll be moving into the, uh, I think the mountain, so. Oh, a little more on the white. I wanted to get a little more white. Your paint gets really, really contaminated fast when you're, Wet, wet on wet, so a lot of times you need to take your palette knife and wipe it off on paper towel or a rag or whatever you have. And I'm just trying to get some white highlights here, and then I'm going to blend them in again. Okay, there. A little bit more, just to make them a little whiter. Just blending them down. Thinking of the dark spots, so don't kill all the dark or they won't look good. muting this and taking a sip of my tea. Okay, getting some more dark. I think I'm going to go for the mountain now. So I'm mixing up white, blue, crimson. There's a little bit of Van Dyke brown. It might be Van Dyke or be burnt sienna, but there's our mountain right there. And I want it to be blue because mountains are typically the base colors are blue when they're far away. And this one's going to have some snow in it. This is a winter painting, so... <laughs> Ten minutes in, we're a third of the way done. Okay. Very good. And it just kind of goes and goes and goes. Very easy. Very easy. Okay. And just trying to make mountain shapes, you know, and I'm kind of concerned with the outside of the mountain. So, you know, you want your outside to be uh, pretty detailed. You know what? try to make good lines, but sometimes it's, it can be more hard, and I'm not using a brush here, so um, this is just a good little mountain, good little whatever you want to say. Ooh, there we go. 
and it, uh, you know, I'm just going to do the one peak on it. And then all I'm doing is trying to make the bottom lighter because that makes it give you more depth. And if you make the bottom lighter, it'll look like mist and it'll make the mountain stand out. So when you put trees in the front foregrounds, uh, they'll, it'll push that mountain back, make, give you some depth and some distance. And just grab whatever I can off the palette. It's a fun way to paint because I don't have a picture on this one. I just kind of just started. I knew what I was kind of what I was going to do, but you just come in and start throwing color on there. There, I'm trying to detail that a little more. See that? Yeah, a little more definition in that peak there. I might round that one a little more. That looks good there. See, and you can kind of make the shape of the mountain with your knife when you want highlights or you want shadows on it. Very good, very good. And it comes over there. And it, uh, yeah, seems to be looking pretty good. Now what we're going to do is keep going. I don't think I've gotten too high in the last, peaked out too much. But it's uh, looking pretty good. Hopefully this works. <laughs> I might stop it and come again just to see how it how it's working here. So I think I'll do that and then I'll be right back. I'm adding some purple in here, just messing around with color, make it look fun. Okay, and still just working on the bottom. Just working on the bottom and just trying to figure out where my land's going to be. So I'm just grabbing paint off both sides of the knife here, just going to town with it. Okay. Seems to be working good. And we'll come back in there a little dark. I just started to throw bunches of colors in here. And yeah, just add dark at the base. more there. I think I'm using a larger knife here. It works faster than I think I had a smaller one, but I was trying to go a little quicker. And I'm just going back and forth. So, see, I've got kind of the, the blade of the knife horizontal, and sometimes you can turn it a little more so you can get the full blade going back and forth. And I could have done that here too, but um, like I said, I was just going through here and having a good old time. Okay, and again, it's just uh, just putting dark in the base. You know, you want the bottom, you know, the, the area that's near your uh, the middle to be lighter. And now I'm just trying to put some dark in, and then we can blend it together again. But you want your the bottom of the painting to be the darkest. Close as things uh, get closer to you, they they get darker and they get more color, and they uh, get more uh, defined. Uh, you can tell what they are more obviously but so I'm just going to put in this in and then I'm going to probably I think I come back in and put some more um, get some more uh, white in there and try to blend it down because I'm going to have some pine trees in here and then I'm going to do a, a good demonstration of uh, how to do a uh, a good uh, a birch tree just a single birch tree with a knife I think they work the best when you use knives on the birch trees because they get a lot of, when the paint breaks, it looks like the bark and stuff. And so, okay, here comes the white. Here comes the white. Okay. And it's just coming in and I'm going to try to pull it down. I don't want to kill all my dark, though. But I'll come in and put some highlights on the mountain and stuff, and then that's, the light's going to be coming from the right, and then the shadow side will be the left. And it's working good. Okay, now here comes some highlights, and I just put a little bit on the knife, and sometimes you can you can just tap, let it fall off. The paint on here is pretty thick. Now I did have some white paint that I used. I don't know if it was this painting or the other one. Uh, but it was really gummy and it kind of messed up. This could be it. It's just not falling off as much. But I'm happy with with the, the highlights here. They look 
they look fine. And they let it break. If you let it break like this, then you, uh, it looks right. You know, it doesn't look like you iced a cake. So on a little piece, a little bit to fall off. And then you can decide where your highlights are. And every highlight, you have, you know, you typically need a shadow so that uh, it, it looks right. Okay. And it's just coming down. Just coming down. And just adding some white, some snow. This looks pretty cold out there. And this is an eight by ten. A lot of times, if you get a larger, the edges can be kind of challenging when you're when you're on a with a knife because there's wood around the edges that they wrap the canvas around, and it can kind of give you a little bit of a some issues. So not a big deal. This mountain almost looks like it's pointing to the left, doesn't it? There, see, I'm adding in some dark. I want a little more dark on that side. Shadow. Hey, okay. there. Now you can kind of see where the mountains, you know, geometrical shape or it breaks in half. If you're painting mountains, you just come right down the middle and make a wiggly line back and forth. And you'll see your peaks and your shadows, and, you know, and you can use knives and paint brushes to get it done and stuff. But now I'm just going to blend some of this together. It looks like mist. I like that. It's looking good. Again, I just knew I wanted clouds, a mountain peak, winter, and uh, some pine trees that I'll put in with a knife. They can be challenging too. It's much easier, I think, to do a birch tree with a knife than a pine tree. Especially on a small 8x10 like this. But yeah, it it, uh, it looks good. Now I don't know what I'm doing. I must be loading up some more uh, paint, get it mixed. Sometimes when I have these, I should edit these and make them go faster through here. But um, you know, 34 minutes. I mean, what I would suggest, and I do all the time when I'm watching YouTube videos, is I just stick my thumb and tap until I get to a point that I want to see, or I can go back or forth or whatever. And that usually works really well. And so, yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I think I must be mixing up some tree stuff. And I think the foreground's done. Yep, okay. Here comes first tree. And all I did was put a bead on there. Yeah, just a bead of paint. And then I'm just trying to make the trunk. There we go. And push up, push up. There we go. And I'm gonna have one next to it. <laughs> I'm just having fun here. It's like it's not coming off like I would hoped. But and if you want this to come off faster, you can put a little paint thinner in there. But when you do that, it, it thins the paint. And it's gonna be harder to make the trees. So now I'm just taking the knife and trying to make tree shapes. Just tapping back and forth, pulling pushing, whatever you can do to make it look like a pine tree. And that looks pretty good. It's indications. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. But they are, uh, they're not looking bad, though. I think that's not too bad. Then we're going to come through and add some more at the bottom. I think I'm going to have, th I think there's three on this side. Let's come back and forth, making the other one. I would assume that the first one I did is closer, and this one should be farther. But they're all going to kind of mix together, and and they'll and they should turn out pretty good. I just finished a painting yesterday that I've been working on for a long time for a friend of mine, and it's so nice when you get something done that's a little out of my league. <laughs> A little harder stuff I don't do. I tend to take a lot more time when you do these 30 minute paintings, 30, 40, under an hour, you know. And uh, they're fun because you really just maybe have an idea in your head, but not going off of a, a painting that's going to be a uh, commissioned piece of work. But uh, yeah, 
that's this one's coming together. There's so much paint on there. Sometimes you just have to start blotching color on. Get a lot on the palette. See, I'm just going back and forth. They take a little while, the trees and stuff. But the mountain, you know, I think I like the mountain. I think it turned out pretty good. Like I said, I think the white I was using was not... I threw it away, actually. It was gummy and... I don't know what, it was just not a good paint. Uh, so I, I ended up, I think halfway through, I think I switched over and got some different white. And uh, yeah, I think that'll look good. But see, now I'm just trying to pull some shadows out from there, you know, because the light's coming from the right. So, so to say, it might just kind of, oh, here comes tree number three. Now see that one I started at the top, that paint comes off and just trying to make a, there, there we go. And, yeah, there we go, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes, oh, excuse me, sometimes it's better to, I don't know, start at the middle, and you can start and then work your way up and then down. If you're, sometimes I tend to do that. I think it's easier. So you start too wide on your tree at the top, then you're done. And if you start in the middle, you can kind of adjust as you go. And these are just brushes, you're just palette knife strokes back and forth and it sounds good you know when you have a painting like this and a knife on canvas typically is pretty kind of relaxing so like I said if you see this one there's another one on there that does have uh, minimal voice just at the beginning I explained it and then it's pretty much a thank you at the end and the rest is all knife and of course some brush strokes put in the the wash on. It'd take a while to scrub the, you could do the back, the sky with, um, with your palette knife, but I figured it'd be easier to just, uh, just do it with the uh, one inch brush. Okay, so they're done. I'm gonna put like a, I think I've put some brown on the knife. A little bit of that brown, maybe it was burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is one of my favorite. Yeah, there's burnt sienna in there. You can see the redness in it, but yeah, you can go in and do that, and then, you know, I got three trees, it's an odd number, they usually look better in odds, but then when I add in the one, the one uh, birch tree, I, mean, I like the birch tree in this one, and then when I add in that birch tree, it uh, really gets, uh, it looks good, the shadows and highlights, for doing it with a knife, and then the tough part on a birch tree when you're using a knife is the branches can be a little tricky, because you don't have a liner brush, but here we go. Going to the birch tree. And I've got a pretty good chunk of paint on the end of it that I'm using. And I just want to pull that up. I'm just going to make it go all the way off the canvas almost. You just sit in there, old birch tree. Come the other way. Just kind of make it. I'm just pulling and trying to pull up a little because it'll make the tree look round. Those square trees look kind of funny. Sorry about my squeaky chair. I'm doing this on my laptop. I used to do them on my iPhone, which is kind of fun too when you can just sit back and relax, but I've got a new mic here that sounds pretty good, I think. And so um, it's much better than the, the mic on my iPhone. You start doing videos on your phones, you start running out of... <laughs> you start running out of uh, space really fast. So I recommend buying a camera and you can get SD cards and micros, 256 gigs for like 20 bucks. You have all the, all the memory you'll ever need there and then you don't need to block your phone up with it. And when I download my videos, I just take them from my SD card, I'll put them in my software editing like right now. And then I download them to YouTube and then some of them go to my Facebook page and my Instagram page. But Okay, so here, oh, here we go. These are the, just trying to make the birch tree. So I'm just taking some blue with some white, and I'm just grabbing and pulling from the left to the right to the left, and trying to round up. And that'll give it some sort of a, that'll give it some sort of a uh, roundness. So now I'm mixing my shadow color, or I might be getting some more white. We'll see. Yeah, more white. And this will, you'll be able to tell really quick here. See, a little more white there. Just go right to the edge and pull. Circular. Kind of pull up a little. Touch and pull, touch and pull.
cool. I'm running out of white. You want over to this. You got to kind of like your mountains. You got to make it look. There we go. See that white really stands out. Makes it look like an old birch tree in the winter. Not too exciting, but you can tell kind of what it is. A little more at the bottom. There we go. The other one I did was similar. The painting, a little bit different. Mountains on the other side, but um, turned out good. I don't mind winter paintings. I think they're the easiest to do. I'm more of a spring and summer guy. But in Montana right now, it's uh, winter and it's cold. I'm looking out my window right now and it's there's snow. So we'll paint winter stuff. Well, we're under 10 minutes to go. And they'll be wrapped up. And we got this here. Now I'm using some blue and white. So you want your shadow side and you grab it and pull towards middle. There. There. And then it'll give us that blue and it really looks good. I think this I'm 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 my my view on this is a little difficult because it's really small on the computer monitor. Like a four by three maybe. And I, it won't doing the voiceover it won't let me enlarge it, so which is fine, but What's happening now is I think it shows up really well on your monitor, probably on a cell phone, most of <laughs> or I watch her on cell phones or my tablet. Okay, now I'm doing, trying to make some sort of, I was going to usually make a line from the tree out, and I just got some brown in here and probably some blue mixed in it. And I'm just trying to, you know, go in at an angle and then, you know, make an angle and then wherever the branch bends, go a different angle from there. And that's a pretty easy way to do them. It's hard to it's hard to make fan uh, to make curvy branches <laughs> with a palette knife. But boy you could paint a lot of thick paint in this this one in particular. You can see the when I put the highlights on the trees here in a minute, how much they stick out. And uh yeah they're uh they dry fast because I mixed a little bit of, well, no, I guess I didn't on this one. Sometimes I'll mix paint thinner with my, or liquid or lots of stuff with my oils and then they dry faster. Or I might use an acrylic base. I'm doing a painting right now and I use an acrylic base for some of it and then I come back with the final touches and highlights of using oils. And I know they're, I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but it might only last a hundred years, but... I know a lot of really good artists that do it. <laughs> that really talented people with very expensive art. So that's where I, they're doing it. I guess I'll do it. Sometimes you're on a timeline too and you have time to let your oils dry. So it's nice to have that opportunity to do that. So there's our birch tree. Another thing you can do with birch trees, and I didn't do it in this one, is you can... Uh, excuse me, you can come in and you can uh, add dark, get some black and go a little bit right in the middle between the blue and the white and that'll give you some some cool stuff too. This is a small palette or a, a small canvas so um, I just thought I'd leave it at that. Okay, come in and put some more white in. You know, just touching, barely touching, let the paint fall off the knife. I think I'm back to the smaller knife here. I'm not sure exactly it's you know it has a little it's they're really good because you can use either the edge one's really short and then the other one for for other things i'm gonna try to get some highlights in here I'm trying to see how it best comes off <laughs> see there we go just have fun i mean don't overthink it and care if it looks perfect you know if you look at them about six feet away and you look they look like pine trees that looks like a mountain the clouds I would say look like clouds and the uh, other tree looks like a birch tree in the winter with no no leaves you get to the top it gets a little tougher but see you're just trying to pull some stuff on there don't kill all your dark though as then it just won't you know won't look right but it probably just snowed a lot here Almost looks like a frozen tundra back there behind the tree, like it's somewhere in Alaska. 
one big peak sticking up. Okay, now, and on the left there by the birch trails I did is I put that little shadow behind it. That's what I was kind of trying to get there, but now the rest of the painting is just going to be working on highlights on the branches, the snow that came down. And about done here. I think I'm going to go back to my my black um, background. So there's, you know, you can see some of my other work in the back there and kind of like it, but I think I'm going to take and uh, have the background black again. So there's no distractions. I kind of like that, uh, you know, put that cape up. I've got a thing that holds it like a curtain. Then you can paint anywhere. I could go in the garage and paint or any room and just have the curtain behind it or the room I paint in has pretty good light. It's a north-facing room, so um, in the afternoons it's good. The mornings it's pretty not here. Very good. Okay, we're getting there. And I hope this is all working good because I don't want to have to redo it. <laughs> now I'm just taking the knife and I'm pushing up, pushing up with my... Okay, I'm pushing up with the knife, just making little tree things and indications. Put a little dark on there. Now if it hasn't been a black canvas, you could just scrape away the paint. You'd have them automatically without you paint on them. That works too. But this is a white canvas, so we weren't able to do that. Just adding in some more highlights, some more snow. Okay, yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting when you're doing like a trying to make a little path maybe I can't remember what I did there I, I put a rock in one of them and it kind of got so much brown got in it I kind of wished I wouldn't have but I think that's on the other one and it still turned out pretty good though so yeah everything's coming in makes more little indications of stuff here and there coming in and coming out okay Dragging that down. Very good. Just scratching in some things. And well, as I wrap this up here, I just want to thank you guys for watching and all uh, you art fanatics or people that like to watch painting or hopefully this was a uh, an easy or a fun video to watch, even though it's me talking but maybe it helped explain a few things. Um, I'm signing my name with my back of my, I'm scratching it out with my, uh, uh, my butt end of my paintbrush, one of my brushes, one of the skinnier ones. And I think I'm gonna come back and add in some color. I can't remember, but there, we've got an easy little landscape with some trees. You've got the, you've got the uh, pine trees, birch trees, I don't know what they are, winter trees, and then you've got the the, um, the the birch tree to it, the next of it, so, and it kind of looks good. Birch trees can be fun to do a bunch of them, they're the thick and big trees, and then you can really have that, and I like to use red because it stands out, but what I did here is I, I scrapped, scraped away my initials, and then I come back in with some red, and put that right there, otherwise it would have been pretty hard to do, then I kind of makes it easier so um but that's about it um i want to thank everybody for watching and um subscribing in the comments uh, if you want to see something let me know and i'll paint it but uh, uh again thank you and have a wonderful day